Hello everyone and welcome to Ogispot. In this episode I'm gonna present you another character build and that's gonna be extremely budget friendly build as well. It's gonna be a Frenzy Barbarian and let's have a quick look over the stats uh, distribution tab. As the name probably suggests uh, you can guess what kind of a gear we're gonna be using. So it's a 86 level Barbarian at the moment. Uh, base stats 130 into strength just to be able to wear the gear 55 into dexterity again same reason just to be able to carry the gear and absolutely everything else goes into vitality to raise uh, our life pool as much as we can our attack rating really decent over 10k per hand our damage might be appearing a little bit low to you at the moment but don't let that fool you i'm gonna explain you why in a minute our defense really decent, especially whenever we pre-buff with battle order, shout, and etc. Our resistances are so overstacked, we're running probably all resist above 200, and I'm gonna explain you how just in a minute. So this build is extremely budget, as I've already said, and it's also really, really powerful. That's gonna quickly pre-buff the barbarian and show the advanced stats tab and have a quick discussion over it so as it is with the buff we've got 553 to mana 3626 life which is really really decent our damage uh, raised up slightly as well as our attack rating our defense uh, just uh, slightly under 8k which is where you want to be, I'd say, for a meta character on health difficulty to survive without too much of a hassle. Again, our resistance is well overstacked. We got 9% life stolen per hit, which is really decent. It keeps us alive. 60 increased attack speed, knockback option. 30 faster run walk, 87% faster hit recovery. That's extremely important. The frame you need to go above is uh, 86%, and I'm just... Uh, 87 so one above it so i hit the maximum frame which i'm targeting for and that's uh, very important simply because uh, this is a dual wielding character wearing two swords and whenever you do that and you don't equip shield you don't have chance to block and pretty much every other hit which uh, hits you is going to put you into faster hit recovery animation so you definitely have to have that higher frame so you can keep attacking and not being interrupted. We also got the cannot be frozen mode, which is uh, definitely needed for a melee character. Cold absorb 20%, 35% crushing blow, which is really, really decent. 200% extra damage to undead, which is quite huge. And 550% damage to demons, that's absolutely massive. So, as I said already, don't let that uh, low amount of damage actually fool you, because so whenever we hit, we hit really hard. And let's say we hit a demon type of a enemy, multiply that damage by 5.5, and whenever we do a critical attack, multiply that by 2 again, so we can actually do between 10 and 20k to a demon enemy or hit and that's absolutely insane especially given how cheap this setup is now let's have a quick discussion over the skill tree first up we're gonna start with the combat skills and i also want to mention that this is uh, somewhat of a hybrid character it's not only a frenzy barbarian we're also utilizing the double throw and that's why we're gonna see some probably weird for you skill choices so let's have a quick look over the combat skills one to bash 20 into double swing one into double throw 20 into frenzy one into berserk just because every now and then you run into a physical immune monster and with berserk you can just kill him so easily one into whirlwind simply because why not i really like this skill and that's about it pretty much for the combat skills quick explanation so frenzy if you take a closer look into it the synergies for the frenzy skill are double swing taunt and berserk so by maxing out 
the first one which is double swing we also benefit we also benefiting a second skill which is double throw because if you take a look at the double throw the synergy for the double throw is again double swing so by maxing out double swing we're benefiting two skills and these are our two attacks frenzy and double throw also let's go and discuss the war crisis tap again single point into town just because it's a synergy for a frenzy and from now on every extra level i'm gonna get on this character i'm gonna spend the points into town because this is another synergy for the frenzy and it gives eight percent extra damage for every single skill you spend into it and one into hoe one into shout 20 into battle orders just because it's a very well rewarding skill for every single point you spend into it so why not maxing it out and just grant us that massive life and mana pool one into battle command just to extend the skill buff a little bit higher again with that setup as you can see from the combat skills with just a single point put into bash my bash is actually at level 15 so we got a quite decent amount of plus all skills coming from our setup as well and this is gonna bring us into our inventory so as the name suggests we're utilizing the Bukato set this set is not that uh, used or popular I'd say but it's actually quite nice and I'm gonna explain you why so first up that's the Colossus blade the bigger of the two swords the larger one and as you can see it's socked with a shell rune just to increase the attack speed up to 40 percent 200 percent enhanced damage on it 35 percent crushing blow which is really really good amount knockback option and all resistance is 20. so the options which you unlock from completing the set are also quite nice to do all skills 200 to attack rating 200 percent damage to demons 200 percent damage to undead 20 fire damage and 25 defense and let's have a quick look over the other sword the shorter one of the two the mythical sword so again soft with shell rune 40 percent increased attack speed 200 percent increased damage 50 poison damage over two seconds 20 to strength really decent amount fire resist 50 so again really decent amount of resistance is coming just from these two swords our helmet of course that's gonna be the area's face probably one of the best helmets for barbarian and it's been soaked also with shell rune just to be able to reach that higher amount of faster hit recovery i've been telling you about so two to combat skills two to barbarian skills 50 percent faster hit recovery with the shell rune 20 percent bonus increase to attack rating five percent life stolen per hit really needed because we need to leech just to sustain ourselves in battle 20 to strength 20 to dexterity really big bonuses to stats all resistance is 30 again massive all resist pool for this character and now we're also utilizing another end game set again not popular by any mean also really really cheap so i forgot the mention about the prices to gear up this character so if you look to buy the Bukato swords each one individually I'd say you probably look to give around Lem Rune or maybe some perfect gems and probably that's about it because nobody wants to use them actually and yeah they're actually really really cheap and I don't really know why because these are definitely end game items but yet again really easy to get really cheap so why not go to go for it and our disciple set uh, also really really easy to get pretty much nobody's looking for any of those pieces apart from the laying of hands which is going to be the gloves but again i'd say you can spend about lamb maybe pool rune to get the whole set or probably trade about 50 perfect gems for it and still get it that way I've traded the uh, lamb rune for this area's face, so that's quite cheap also. So so far we're looking about um for the whole set and the area's face and the bull cat set. 
so that's really really cheap to gear this character now let's talk about the rings so raven frost ring absolutely needed for a melee character for the cannot be frozen mode also cold absorb 20 percent real decent option 42 mana 22 dexterity real decent amount of dexterity in there so nice amount of cold damage and good boost to attack rating overall the other ring of course we're not bull Katos if we don't wear the full equipment so that's going to be the bull Katos ring one to all skills four percent life stolen per hit really needed again 43 to life based on a character level so that's one's going to increase even further really helpful with uh, increasing our life pool the gloves 20 to increase attack speed 350 percent damage to demons that's how we actually achieve our 550 percent damage to demons boost Fire resist 50, again from completing the Disciple set, 2 to all skills, 7 poison damage, 150 descent, defense, sorry, 10 to strength, 100 to mana, all resistances 50, again massive option over here. So the armor is being soaked with the Shao rune just to get uh, 20 extra percent faster hit recovery to be able to hit that uh, breakpoint. Fire resist 24, again on the armor. The belt. 10 to strength, 10 to dexterity, all resistance is 15. So as you've already seen, we're absolutely overstacked on all resistance and amount of strength and dexterity boost is just insane as well. The boots, 30 faster and woke, quite crappy actually, but you need them to complete the set. The amulet, 1 to all skills, again decent boost to all skills coming from our gear. And also decent amount of resistances, cold resist and poison resist. And on switch weapons, I got two right flight, these uh, ethereal ghost glaives with quite high throw damage. Also nice life, um, knife, sorry, life leech and mana after each kill with replenishes quality. So that's why I've been telling you I'm a hybrid uh, build with this character. We're using frenzy and double throw on switch weapons you might question my choice over here and why i'd not put uh, dual spirit swords for example just to pre-buff with additional extra skills the truth is compared to that uh, setup i'm only losing two to all skills because i get two to all skills from my bull cat swords and that's the main reason and why to spend those two extra skills just to get let's say hundred more life that way we actually have an arranged attack which is also quite powerful and that's about the gear setup quick uh, talk about the charms so this hellfire torch i've also bought for umrun so overall the whole character without the bull cattle spring costs about mal i'd say extremely budget friendly considering the power which actually that gear provides us in terms of inventory you want to have just uh, enough for the faster hit recovery that's why i care with me those two charms the rest of my inventory is gonna be damage with attack rating so these two are five strength and five dexterity with attack rating and maximum damage maximum damage attack rating poison damage maximum damage attack rating maximum damage attack rating maximum damage attack rating attack rating maximum damage attack rating life maximum damage attack rating maximum damage attack rating maximum damage attack rating maximum damage attack rating again life maximum damage attack rating maximum damage attack rating extra gold maximum damage attack rating life and that's about it pretty much course these charms are quite low in power you can get much 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 stronger charms but i just keep it in terms of budget friendly so actually i don't have any better charms on these at the moment and yeah i can also put that <laughs> as a reason and yeah now let's show you how powerful this build actually is and we're on health difficulty let's go into the first waypoint in act 5 Free buff before the fight and let's go and kill Eldritch. So as you can see those monsters are not even undead or demon class and yet again we absolutely smash them. So 
so the life leech is helping us to stay alive in this fight. And as you can see, they just go down so easily. And with the frenzy skill, we're so quick. Just uh, funny how quickly the barbarian actually runs. So let's go ahead, skip these guys first a little bit, then just uh, focus on Shank. Whenever you kill Shank, the rest of them just start to die a little bit after that. So we didn't get uh, any good drops here, but that's about it. We don't really run any magic find amount with this setup, but that's fine. So what else I'm gonna show you? You can definitely do Travinko runs with this setup. It's just this character is so powerful. Um, what else? You can pretty much run the whole hell difficulty, I'd say, with this setup without a problem. It's actually really strong. And as you can see, we're moving really fast, so our mobility is definitely very high. So here are the console members. Whenever you don't want to face enemies directly, simply because they're overwhelming you or whatever the reason is, you can just switch to the throwing spears and take them down from a distance. That's how we utilize the range attacks which we've got with this build. Again, coming over, keep in mind we'll first with the amplified damage. Yet again, we're sustaining ourselves really easily. Switch to the spears. And uh, one thing I want to mention about the throwing spears is that those right blades have a slow attack speed on them as a weapon base. And that's why you need to generate some frenzy charges first. And that's how you increase your attack speed and throw them more efficiently. And as you can see, we have both melee and range attacks coming into play with this build. That's why it's really fun to play. You can switch to the spears whenever you want to or feel to. It's definitely adding up some extra variety in terms of the gameplay and in terms of the fun factor. And what else to show you? Let's uh, do an example of a Chaos Run with this build. What do you need? So the Chaos Run might actually be somewhat more difficult for this setup simply because we rely a lot on the leech back and most of the enemies in the Chaos Sanctuary are actually undead so we don't really leech life from them but yet again I'm gonna give it a run. So let's just quickly leap towards the Chaos Sanctuary. Don't really have to fight all those uh, enemies on the labyrinth. And there we go. So we've made it to the Chaos Sanctuary. And here is a uh, immediately... Ooh. They're actually not that friendly as I expected. So let's see what we can do about that. Again, get them in this narrow corridor and just start throwing those spears. You just have to drink a potion, it's inevitable. I think something just glitched out a little bit around here. And yeah, that's what I've been telling you about. We can't really leech on the undead enemies. So, the Chaos Sanctuary might be a bit of a trouble actually for this build. But I'd say we can definitely do it. Let's just have a look how it goes. So as you can see, the other problem which we have is the storm casters, they're burning our mana. But yet again we're able to take the enemies down. Let's get that extra healing potion. The Decrepify Curse is quite bad, but yet again you need to keep in mind that we don't even utilize a mercenary at the moment. We don't even have a mercenary to be honest, so extremely relying on the solo power of this build. 
make things work. Just uh, switching to throwing spears whenever we get a good opportunity to do so. And running down those enemies without too much of a problem, I'd say. Just had to drink a few health potions. Okay, let's just progress further. That's a little bit of too many Fire Lords, so we're gonna get a little bit back and go down a few spears. Again, carry on with the one that wants to fight. So, as you can see, we're smashing them quite well. Those are actually very strong enemies, if I have to be honest. The Venom Lords are definitely no slouch. Yet again, we're taking them down. And even if the other undead uh, monsters curse me down with a lower resistance curse, my resistances are still so high, so that's not a problem. We're just so overstacked. Just pre buff with battle orders and shout every now and then, just because we don't wanna lose the effects of it in battle. That might be a disaster. So again, a nice big chunk of enemies here, so I'm gonna just get a little bit back. First with the crap pie for the moment, so utilizing the ranged attacks. Oh, so that's quite slow, unfortunately. Okay. Let's just carry on with these. Again, as I've already said, the mana burn is a problem, actually. Oh, now, by seeing this sword actually breaking, this reminded me that uh, whenever you have to repair those weapons, simply because they're not uh, those uh, high-level rune wards, you don't really have to spend that much gold repairing them. They're really, really cheap to maintain and repair. So that's uh, another nice benefit. Again, those undead uh, monsters where we don't really leech out of them. Okay, let's keep smashing those guys. Let's click on the seal, so there is the Vizier of Chaos. Kill him. Again, a bit of a problem with the mana, so... I'd say I'm gonna go back to town, get a few more potions, just replenish the mana overall, and repair our sword. So, just to repair that sword, 3k gold, and to repair the other one, 3k gold again. So, as I said, really, really cheap. Okay, let's just carry on with these. So I really like how quickly he swings those uh, swords with the maximum frenzy charges. Okay. It's really annoying that uh, mana burn on the storm casters. Anyway, we've killed them, so let's get that thing going. The next fight is also going to be somewhat difficult. Again, trying to utilize the throwing spear. I really don't like those stone casters. And this one went down quite easily, this one as well. Quickly on the Doom Knights. So with our attack rating, we got 88% chance to hit those monsters, which is not ideal, but it's definitely manageable. Okay, quite a lot of undead here. And we have to be a little bit more careful with the amplified damage and the amount of monsters surrounding us. We don't want that. 
That's why I have to back out every now and then. And just use those spears. Okay. Drink a health potion again. So here we are, we took them down. Now the last few remaining. Okay, so these guys are very dangerous with the fanaticism aura they got. So we're gonna try to do as much damage we can from a distance. They seem to be glitching out, don't really wanna attack me, so that's fine. Okay, whoa! Yeah, these guys are hitting hard. Problem is, we've got amplified damage and they've got fanaticism aura at the same time, which means we have to be extra careful with them because they really hit strong. Come on. Okay, our amplified damage runs out, so we can attack more viciously. Let's jump back into battle with the frenzy and take on the Lord Desace. So we hunted him down. Let's get back a uh, few of those uh, potions and now just progress to the last stage of the fight, which are gonna be the Venom Lords, and they're really, really strong. Okay, let's clear them um, up, those uh, pesky Stormcasters. And when the area is clear, I'm gonna click on the skills and release them. Just wanna clear the strong after first, because I don't want my mana burn during battle. Got a nice large charm being dropped. Let's go. Oh, small charm, that's really nice. So, okay, free buff, because our buff ran out. And here we go. A little bit of a lag. Okay, throwing down a few spears just to get their attention. Here we go. Come on, Venom Lord. Okay, guys. Let's see what you can do. Oh, again, amplified damage and a massive surround. That's not good. So, again, we're running slightly behind and start utilizing the spear get back. I'm just afraid of that Amplified Damage Curse. Oh, this one is in physical as well. So we'll have to use the Berserk. So this fight is quite tricky. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so we'll have to stop using the spears for a while until they replenish the charges. Which means we'll have to take on them with the Frenzy and the Whirlwind. Okay, drink a potion. These guys are really strong, to be honest. Okay. Clear the Infector of Souls, and the others will just die. Whoa! Had to drink the potion again, and here we go. Can't carry anymore. So we got the rest of them. And this is gonna summon Diablo now. So we're gonna take on Diablo with the Amplified Damage Curse, but I think that's fine. And there we go. Actually, missing quite a few of the attacks. Oh, yeah, he's doing fine. 78% chance to hit Diablo. And there we go. We've got a rare ring and a two ring. Let's get back to town and check up our drops. So we got that charm. That charm. 
that ring and that ring. The top. Let's have a look. Okay, crap ring. More resistance is 5 energy, another crap ring. 15 to mana and 4 magic pines. That's a decent small charm. 11 extra gold small charm. Okay, that's trash. So, overall, out of this chaos run, we've got a small charm. And what do you I think that's gonna be it for this build, guys. As I said, you can definitely do the 5 acts without too much of a problem with this build. I'm quite happy with how it came out. It's absolutely smashing demons and undead enemies. I just uh, quickly go over this monastery. Maybe Axe One. Evil so yeah, you can do hit runs. You can do ancient tunnel runs with this build. You can do Kindle skin runs. You can do traveling toe runs, chaos runs, bow runs also. Done a bow run with this build, not a problem as well. So overall, very nice setup, very strong, very quick and mobile, very fun also to play with the throwing spears. Somewhat interesting, definitely off meta build, extremely budget friendly as well, as I said. With a Mao rune and some perfect gems, you'll be able to recreate this exact build. And I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. I hope you liked it. I hope it's been helpful and entertaining for you. And if it was, I'm gonna please request you to click on the like button. Maybe leave a comment. Maybe subscribe me if you're not a subscriber yet, so you can help the channel grow. And check me out later for another content. See you later. Bye.